can share my screen. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to go do our appointments. But remember yesterday when we did our Axios call, we kind of, or when we did our back end, we kind of set up a way where we're getting back the data in a nice way for the front end. But now when we look at like our Axios calls or like how our back end set up, um, let me start my server. So we can see this. Like mainly what I want to show, like when we go to like our API slash appointments. Like this is some weird looking data. Like we just get the IDs of our doctor and our patient. And then, <clears throat> you know, we have, you know, doctors, that's where like our, that information lives and we have our patients. So probably normally there would be some sort of um, AP. I mean, we do have this one. We do have like a, this all data call, which still, it still doesn't really give us what, I mean, it gives us all the information we need, but it doesn't give it to us in the way we want it. And that is just sometimes how it's going to be. Like you might, like we, we have all the information we need. Like this is all the information in our database, but it's gonna be a little confusing or not confusing, but it's like, it's not gonna be directly easy to just map over this. Like, can we just, it's gonna be hard just to map over our patients or our appointments because they don't have like the name of the doctor. And this, this happens a lot of times where you have to like kind of massage or normalize the data from what you're getting back from the back end to like how you want it to look. So, and then we can also pretend, I mean, this, this, is, a, this is a stretch. Let me shut my door. Yeah, we could also this, this maybe pretend that like we have just these three Axios calls, like API doctors, you know, and appointments. And these are all coming from different APIs, like different databases. So like we have to do all three of them and then like merge them together to get our data that we want. So that, that's what we're going to do. We're going to kind of make this like weird assumption that we're going to do all three of them separately and then kind of combine because we need all three pieces of information to create our UI. And then we're going to combine them to create our UI. So let's, let's look at what that means. So for this, I am going to use our use Axios on mount because we're going to be doing three Axios calls on here. So let's do this. Let's do our const response. I, and I'm going to rename this to be my, let's just call it doc response. Loading. It's going to be like doc loading. Air. I'm not actually, I'm not even going to grab the errors. I don't really care. Like for this, I'm not going to do any error handling. We'll just, we can just grab the response and loading off of our use Axios on mount. So this is going to be slash API slash doctors. And I'm going to write this in a function for now. I'm going to say like, I'm going to like render what I should call this. Let's just do call like render um, data. I should start one at a time. So I'm going to do const your data. 
but I'm going to do like if doc loading, I'm going to return loading. <clears throat> Else. I don't need an else for this. Um, let's just do a return. Div. Let's use my list component. Data. And this will be like the doc response. I don't really care about all that other stuff. So I'm just going to do doc response.data. So the this is the response from our Axios call, and the dot data should be the array of my um, doctors. <clears throat> All right, so we're, we're just going to start small and slowly build on this. This is this might get a little heavy, so let's just kind of go step by step. <clears throat> okay, so hit refresh. It looks like that's I don't see my loading. Maybe it's just going super quick. I don't even see that. At all. Oh, wait, no, that's my API call. I'm like, I don't even. S Let's go back to localhost 3000. Let's go to appointments. Like it is flashing loading for like a second. Cool. So there we go. There's my doctors. Let's also, you know, we have this header. Let's give it a header. So now let's do another one. We're going to grab our patients. So what I'm going to do, as long as one of, the, it doesn't matter. I, I just want all of these to get done. So if my doc is still loading or my patient response is still loading, I'm going to return loading. So what I'm essentially doing here is I'm waiting for like, or just, you know, just show loading if any of my Axios calls are in progress. And that's nice because I know if I get past this if, if statement, I know my like Axios calls are done here. Like all Axios calls done. So this could be my patients, and that's going to be my patient response dot data. This needs to be patient loading. We'll use that Boolean. Sweet. So there we go. There's my doctors. There's my patients. Let's do the same thing with appointments. So I'm just going to call this APT response or APTS. Let's just call this. APTS loading. So once again, I'm going to add this to my or statement. So if any of these, or if doc is loading, or the patient's loading, or the appointment's loading, if any of those are true, return loading. If it's not, then we can go ahead and render these lists. If I don't have this if statement here, I might get an error. So I'm gonna get that undefined reading data of null, like, because my res this response is gonna initially be null. So this is why I need this if statement. It's like making sure these things are gonna be defined before I try to return them. 
So this is not just UI. This is actually you know making sure these these things are defined, like those responses are defined. <clears throat> cool. Um. Oh, my appointments look a little weird. I'm like, why is there six Sally in there? Because I need to change this URL. <clears throat> cool. So we've done three separate Axios calls. And then like once they're all done, then we can render the data. But this is not how I want to render it. This was just more testing purposes. I don't want to do it like this. I want to um, <clears throat> call a function right here. Let's call this like normalized. Let's just call this pretty, or I don't know, let's call it, I'm gonna call it normalized. That's usually what I call these normalized um, JSX or data. And actually, how should I do this? Yeah, let's just do this in right here. Okay. So const normalized data. So just one thing I'm keeping note of, like I know all my responses are set here. I'm calling this after here. So that's just something I'm keeping a mental note of. <clears throat> and you know something else? And yeah, no, let's just do it like this. Okay. So what I'm going to have happen is I'm going to have some state here. So let's get use state from React. Maybe this might help kind of show what I'm trying to do. Const um, I'm just gonna call this like appointments and set appointments. equals use state. I'm gonna show you what I want this to look like. So I'm gonna, this is gonna have an ID. It's gonna have a patient. Name, let's do camel case. I'm just gonna hard code these for now. I'm not even going to do name. I'm just going to do patient and doctor just to keep this a little more clean. And then a date. And then let's just give it like two. So here, here's kind of like the, the whole idea of this. Um, if I do, this is kind of like the first time we've maybe seen this. Okay, so like 
I just kind of want to show you what like the appointment data looks like. Like if I do an API call to the appointment data, it looks like this. You know, it's an array of objects that have ID, which is a number, doctor ID, which is a number, patient ID, which is a number, and date, which is my string. But my UI, I'm kind of going, I want the data to look like this, this appointment data to be ID and then have patient key, which is John, which would be a string and doctor, which would be another string and a date, which would be a string. Because this, and let's, let's not talk about this normalized data right now, because this I could just say like a render appointments here. Render appointments. I could just do a little function right here. It goes through my appointments dot map. You know, a div. like you know a. So I could say something like you know we have a doctor. The a dot doctor patient the appointment dot patient and then like a date the a dot date and then we could use the key here a dot id Now I go back here go to my appointments. Oh, I need to return this. Let's see here, why is that not calling that? I need to return, because this render appointments function um, returns this array, so I need to return that. But there we go, we have my appointments, you know, Dr. Liz and John have an appointment on June 1st. Liz and Bill have an appointment on June 2nd. Now these are hard coded. So the what I'm trying to do, or what I'm trying to say, like there's this, missing there's like this gap between how we're getting our data from our database and how we want you know our ui to look for it to look so now we kind of have like this normalized data function where it's maybe going to get a little um hairy or dicey because i need to now go through and figure out how to create this array. But what do I have? I have three P I have three different kind of, you know, I have appointments that look like this. I have that doctor's API call, you know, that looks like this, that has the, the ID of the doctor and then the name. I'm going to get rid of these created at and updated X. So they're just making this messy. I don't have a date either or a patient ID. <clears throat> and then I have patient data. John. So I have like these three arrays, you know, with this data that I want to convert into one array. So 
let's think about how we could do that. Any ideas? Does first of all, do you, do you get what I'm saying? That's the first part. Do you understand the issue? Three arrays. That look like this. We want to go to, and we want to com, like convert. That looks like this. Like essentially, I want to go through my appointments array and switch out the doctor ID with the name, the patient ID with the name of the patient. So let's think about how to do that. First of all, I want to go through my, I really just want to change how my appointments array looks. Like I'm not adding or removing any of the appointments. I'm changing like the data itself. So that's gonna be what, is that a map, a filter for each? Uh, You're not mutating the data, are you? Yeah, I'm not gonna like none. Yeah, I'm not gonna like the this appointments is gonna stay the same. I want to return a new array that's gonna look like this. Yeah, my appointments, doctors, and patients. I don't want to change those. I'm not gonna change those. I'm just creating a new array. I mean, it sounds like map. It's probably your best option. I, I don't know, maybe do you use something else? Yeah, map, map, map's the one to use. I mean, you could technically, you could do it with, for each, you could also do it with reduce, but let's, uh, yeah, map, map would be, for each would be like, why don't you use map? Reduce, you can do everything with reduce, but this one is, I would say, yeah, it looks like a good one for reduce. So, this is kind of what we're doing here in like this normalized data function. And actually, I'm going to move this down right here. Okay, so I'm going to get my appointments response. Now, the way I have this set up, that's really in the data. So my appointments response dot data, you know, these. Now, this is appointments from DB. Okay. Now, I'm going to map over this. I'm just going to call that appointment. And let's just do this. Let's return. Let's store this to an array. Like, I'm just going to call this X. So we're just going to do this little by little ID, ID, and then we want the date, and that's going to be the apt.date. And then we can console.log x. So I need to call this normalized data. We'll do it right here. And I just wanna see what that X looks like. So it's an array of seven things. And you know, that has my seven appointments. Something I might want to do while I'm testing this that's always nice to do is just do a Rails DB reset. So it's like I know exactly what data I'm working with. You know, I can look at my seeds file. I'm not trying to trick myself any further. Like, 
I know I have four appointments. So I'm not trying to like confuse myself. So now if I hit refresh, I need to start my server. Like there's my four appointments, there's their IDs and there's their dates. Cool. All right. So now I can go back to that appointment.js. Ah, so what I wanna do right here is I want to find the doctor. Well, I have my doctors. It's going to be this doc response dot data. And then I'll just comment this out saying like, that's my doctors. How do I find something in an array? What method do I use for that? I want to find one thing. Find? Yeah, that's actually called find. So here's what, and then I give it the function to tell it how to find the thing. So this is going to go through all my doctor, like the doctor response.data, that is my doctors. And I'm going to give it the method to tell me how to find this data. Well, find a doctor where the doctor.id where that equals, remember my appointment has the doctor underscore ID on it. So now I can do something like this, like store that to a variable. So go find the doctor. And then I can say, doctor equals doctor dot name. Let's just do doctor equals doctor and see what this looks like. So we can see it. Clear, let's refresh. Well, now I got the doctor. See how the doctor ID, well, I'm not showing the doctor underscore ID, but that is the right one. Those, you know, Dr. Gill for those first two appointments. And I could go verify that with my seeds file. Those first two appointments have doctor ID with, you know, with the ID of one, then the last two should have the, the ID of two. So we can see that, you know, that doctor as ID two, but I don't want the whole doctor. I just want the name. So I go back to my appointments.js and do doctor.name. I can refresh. So there we go, Dr. Gill and Dr. Lisa. So well, now I just need to do the same thing for my patient. Let's go find the patient. That's going to be the patient response data dot find. Well, let's go through each patient. You know, does that ID equal the the underscore the patient underscore ID from my appointment? So I'm just I'm going through my appointment data like that has a doctor ID and it has a patient ID, and then I'm going to go through these each of like my doctor's array and my patient's array and try to find the like match where the ID of the doctor equals the doctor ID of the patient, of the appointment. And then I can come in here and say patient, patient dot name. Patient response is not defined. What did I call that patient's response?
Now I can go look at this object. Okay, there it is. There's my ID, the date, the doctor, and the patient. That's how I want this. Now I kind of got to figure out how to do this. Maybe I don't need this appointment state. Yeah, what I'm I'm going to make a quick little change because um, I'm not going to hard code this state. This is just going to be an empty array now. And what I'm going to do with this normalized data, I'm going to return it. And I'm going to now just switching this up a little. So I'm going to have this render appointments now take this state. And actually, I don't need this state anymore. So I'm getting rid of that state. So I don't have appointment state anymore. So I don't need my use state anymore. So what I'm going to do is this render appointments, I'm just gonna pass it a, an, an, an array to return. And the array I'm gonna pass it, I get from my normalized data function. So I could call this like, um, you know, appointments. It's called APTS, and then I pass that to my render appointments. And there we go. Now we're rendering over that state. Kind of like this was like, I don't think this is probably the best way to do this, but it works. And it's when you start like getting into these weird like, oh man, I have three different pieces of data and I want it to kind of, because like combine them all to create another kind of data. Like you can kind of get yourself into some weird situations. And then you also might think, is there like a more efficient way to do this? But that is definitely something not to worry about as you're starting out. Um, but you see what we're doing, we're taking, we're getting three separate API calls which are gonna give us data that looks like this. And then we need to kind of do this normalized step where we convert those into something that we can easily map over in React. And that's gonna look good on the UI. Like it's not gonna look good here to show a doctor ID and a patient ID. It's gonna be better to show their name because that's a lot more readable. So why wouldn't you just do one API call for all of them? Like kind of how we did with the um, the grades, how it just gets all the information. Yeah, it, it just could be, so you could kind of think of this, like that's what I was saying, like imagine this, these are three separate APIs or it's one API. And let's just say you don't have any control over this API. Right, okay. So then it, it's, it's like you then you you have to. Yeah, you don't really have any other choice. Yeah, and, and that okay. that's that's usually that's generally the reason. It's like you don't have control over the API. They give you the data, and you're kind of stuck with it. We're also going to see this like when we get to like when we're using like a third party library like React Bootstrap or like a charting library, they're going to want data in a specific way. So like you want to like create a graph or a chart, you're gonna to have to like get data and you're gonna to have to like kind of normalize it so you can throw it to the component so it can render it. 
and there's just like there's yeah there's no way like you're even if you are in control of the back end it's you're not going to be like i'm going to create a method on the back end to give me back the way i want the data on the front end it just doesn't make sense because with especially with like charts and like tables kind of can want data in a specific way like it doesn't make sense to like it would just make your back end really complicated. It's just a lot more easy to be like, here you go front end, here's the data. Um, you know, you do it, use it how you want to. I think what you'll generally like with this kind of data, I, th I think like the most common way you would get back this information is you would have like some random ID and then Probably just get back. Probably the common way this, like if you if you were to, it's kind of going to be one of the other, like where you do have these separate calls, and you kind of just have to work with it. Or there there could probably be a call where like give you it kind of be by appointments that make the most sense, and then like you get like the doctor ID. No, should be one, and then the you know doctor name. Bill, and then like the patient name. Sally. And then the patient ID. you kind of get like back all the information about the appointment. So I would say this would be like, I know like teleperformance land, this is how they would send back the data and you just get like this huge data set. So I was just really all of the, the, the dates of the appointments. And you know, you'd have like a lot of duplicate like patients and doctors in there because you know they have many appointments. Like there's a lot of appointments. But you'd still maybe need like th this might be the one API call you get. And then with this array of data, you would um, create the doctor list. So it's like you would have to go, you know, from this array to an array of just, you know, doctor names. But you'd have to remove all the duplicates because you wouldn't want, like you would get back an array where Bill was in there three times, but you'd want to create a new array where Bill was only in there once. And yeah, if this was like my, like where I worked at teleperformance, if I was like, can't you just create an Axios call to give me back um, just all the unique doctors, they would, they would just say, oh no, well, here's the call you can use. You can just yourself go filter out. Like, like you can do that on the front end. But tele teleperformance had this, like their database, like they're just like, they kind of have the ideology of like, we're just going to give you back all the, like one Axios call or like few API calls that gave you the most of the data you need. And it worked out well, because then you just do one API call and then you have all this data and then you could go through and pick out all the things you need. Right, like if we had an API call that gave us back something like this with our data like this, I think you could do anything you wanted. So you're getting the ID of the appointment, you get the doctor ID, you get their name, patient name, the patient ID and the date. 
And so from this, it's like you could create a unique list of all the patients. You could create a unique list of all the doctors. You could create a unique list of all the appointments. I mean, that's what this is. You could create a list of all the appointments, you know, after June 2nd. You could go get all of Sally's appointments. Like, stuff like that. So this kind of thing you're going to like, especially like if you're front end, this is stuff you do. Well, I know I did, especially at teleperformance. I was doing stuff like this all the time. Cool. Um, cool. Yeah, I think this is a good place to stop. This was probably like a little, like this last little part was a little new, but it's just kind of showing you, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do this. There's going to be a lot of different ways how like the back end is doing things, how the front end chooses to do stuff. So it's really like those brain teasers and like knowing what, like just it's once you know the fundamentals, it's like I'm just trying to stress learning the fundamentals. And then you, that like, it's going to make you a better like Lego builder. Cause if you know how to like put these little pieces together, then these things become like, oh, this is just like a coding challenge I do on leak code. But yeah, it definitely gets complicated when you're putting that all together. So. And week seven, we're gonna do a lot of this. Like we're gonna do, a, when we get into SQL, we'll have more control on how we're sending our data back. But there's still always gonna, when we get to week seven, there's gonna be like, it's kinda of gonna be like, we do custom SQL, we send that data back to the front end. Then the front end is gonna to need to normalize it in a way where they, that where it looks like a react, like how react wants it. So here's our new, this new step. You know, normalizing data. Say that is um, kind of, you know, changing structure data from you know your back end to match you know your front end And yeah, this is this is just a taste. We're gonna like spend, we'll see this a lot in probably week seven or eight. So we'll do a lot of this. Cool. Well, that is it for me. I'll push this up to GitHub. Are there any questions or too many questions? I'm good. Cool. Well, let's take lunch. Um, let's come back at, let's just call it 210. Cool. Thank Have you. A good one, everyone. Thank you.